Praise the Lord and good morning. On behalf of Pastor Lavinia, I would like to welcome everyone who has tuned into this message. Now, before we go into the actual message, let's bow our heads, close our eyes and pray that God actually gives us that is open to accept and to receive and to understand the good news and what the scripture has for us today. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity for us to come together as a family, Lord, to come to glorify and honor your name, Lord. And especially during this pe period of Lent when we are preparing ourselves towards Easter, Lord, help that this message opens our mind and understand what we are supposed to do during this period. A very crucial period before we are in our hearts prepared to receive you Lord and with your resur resurrection we may we also be resurrected along with you Lord when we have accepted and repented and received you as our Savior Lord let your Holy Spirit be with us so that there will no there will not be any hindrance obstructions or distractions Lord let this message reach the people who are seeing this and that and also to me Lord that it will also be enlightening and a timely reminder all this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus amen so dear people uh, today we are going to talk about what is Lent and what has it what significance does it have to us especially during this period now before we go into the message, let us look at today's scripture reading, which is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 5 and 6, which reads, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do, not, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Amen. Now, we all know that uh, we are all heading to Good Friday and uh, Easter. And it is a day, uh, Good Friday is a day that we observe the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross in atonement for our sins and how we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on Easter day, on Easter uh, when he triumphed death. So the six weeks prior to Easter is uh, known as a period called Lent and it is usually uh, observed by different denominations like the Roman Catholics, the Anglicans, the Lutherans, Methodists and some other denominations. Now some commentators have said that the word Lent is actually from a uh, is a very simplified version is to say lengthen so the lengthening of the days or you call it springtime in in uh, the tropics or in malaysia we don't have uh, winter spring summer and autumn we don't have the four seasons but basically what happens is during this period of spring is when the days get longer so the days are longer and the nights are shorter as compared to in winter where the nights are longer and the days are shorter so the length actually uh, stands for lengthen and uh, some historians also say that the original period of this Lent was an observation of 40 hours of prayer and fasting to commemorate with uh, Jesus uh, time from the time he he was he died on the cross till he resurrected on the third day uh, is the 40 hours so to commemorate or to remember to uh, the sufferings and what Jesus has done for us so that 40 days they actually go into fasting and prayer of course in the third century after the council of Nais, Naisia uh, it happened that they extended or lengthened this 40 hours to six days and then somewhere around uh, the 800 AD they extended it to 40 days and we know that uh, somewhere around the 1600s, 1600 years after the birth of Christ, some of the denominations dropped this Lenten season 
of this 40 days following a very uh, prescribed calendar basically because they believed that it was a Roman culture and it, it didn't have some biblical uh, background or backing of this 40 days. Of course, irrespective of what the history is, length or this period of time is to focus on the suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died on the cross, not for his sins, but for in atonement for our sins. So it is a good time for us to reflect on the sacrifices that Jesus did for us. Because Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, we too will rise and have an eternal life with him. But before that, before the resurrection, before we actually reach the day of Easter, during this Lent season, we as people of God have to prepare ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. Let us look at three things that we are called to do during this period in relationship to what Jesus has done for us. The first is to examine ourselves. When I say when I examine ourselves, it's not like a medical examination, it's not physical, but it's something of the heart. We have to examine ourselves uh, very deeply, very personally and we have to examine what is in our hearts. Is it a heart of flesh or is it a heart of stone? Now, what is in your heart is only known to you and to God. Nobody else outside. We may look perfect, we may look religious, we may look holy, we may look everything that what others perceive us to be but inside is what only we and God knows. Now imagine if there is an app or a program where you fix like an ECG machine where you fix it on your heart and, uh, and you can actually display what is in your heart on a white screen. In, in the presence of let's say we are having our church and it's presented up on the screen. How would you feel? How do you think people around you will, will uh, react? Now that is exactly what God sees in our heart. People may not see but God sees because in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 God tells prophet Samuel that he does not see the external appearance but he sees the heart. So we need to examine our heart and this is a place that God sees and we've got no place to hide from the the view that God has about our heart. Now, when God sees our heart, we actually got no place to hide. And in fact, what you know, God knows. And I would even go further to say He knows more than what we remember. Because sometimes we unconsciously forget or conveniently forget certain things that we have done in our lives that is still burdened and it is so... Uh, hanging so heavily on our hearts and God knows that and we also may know it. So it is very important to examine our hearts during this period and pray that God in his mercy and grace forgives us for our sins that we would have done intentionally or unintentionally. The second thing that we have to do during this Lenten season is to spend time in prayer. Now we all know that prayer is a conversation with God where we actually uh, put forth everything that is in our heart that all our problems, all our uh, victories, all our joys, all our sufferings, all our doubts, all our uncertainties we put forward to God. He knows what is in our heart but He wants us to actually announce it to Him. So when we bring it out then we are declaring what is in our heart and we want him to help us and assist us and to overcome these issues. So when we spend time with him and we realize what we have after examining, our prayers must also be of asking him to forgive us when we have repented. More so during this period of Lent, we need to spend more time in the word of God, in prayer, in meditating the word of the Lord. 
how do we spend more time when i say spend more time you know it's the same we all have got the same 24 hours how do we spend more time during this length period it is a norm a practice but it doesn't have to be during only this length period but it's just that we are preparing for easter so it is a good time to start how do we prepare or how do we create more time by sacrifices like sacrificing a, a meal or, or having one meal a day so you sacrifice let's say you sacrifice uh, breakfast or you sacrifice lunch and uh, the the time that your employer or where you're working you get that place when you sacrifice doesn't mean like you just you know because you're sacrificing you tell everyone that you're weak and you know you sleep on the table and things like that no i'm saying that that time is spent spending quality time with god by reading the scriptures by understanding and even meditating on the word in silence and in solitude with him so it is by like sacrificing uh, tv or computer games so when you stop seeing tv or you stop uh, playing computer games you get more time to spend time with god and of course uh, in today's day i would say it's not tv computers but it's more of social media if we can cut off from social media we can actually get more time i've said this in a previous message there was a period in time last year when this lockdown started and there was a flood of messages in whatsapp so i decided that it was taking too much time it was too negative and it was distracting so i stopped seeing whatsapp for about a month and you will be surprised that i had thousands of messages that i had not seen try it and see if you stop seeing your whatsapp for about a month or let's say even for about two weeks and see the amount of messages that is in your inbox or that you have not read these are all unless it is of course related to work but most uh, uh, good morning messages uh, most messages are sometimes distracting there are good messages i'm not saying all are bad because some are very powerful sermons uh, that is uh, uh, shared or there are scriptures that are shared which talks to our heart in that situation that we may be in but more so 80% of it is not uh, worth your time to spend reading it so in that sense if we can actually cut down on social media it can be whatsapp it can be facebook instagram whatever and that time you spend with god during this lenten season to prepare ourselves to receive christ the resurrected christ now the purpose of uh, the lenten discipline is to actually in in summary I, i'm trying to say is it strips away all the things that cluster our mind and our thoughts and our time it actually occupies and takes away the time that we can focus on god this distractions the worldly distractions try to pull us away from that straight path as we saw last week god is telling us keep his word let not his words depart from our mouth which we saw in Joshua chapter 1 and he is saying do not turn left or right he is saying go towards come towards me in a straight path so when we move in that straight path we know that we have spent and we have got the quality time and we get the peace we get the answers for the prayers that we are praying so when we put our whole heart and soul in finding what god has in store for us in finding what we need to repent for then you see that the communication and the channeling between god and us becomes very close and his voice is heard very clearly usually we do not hear with all the noise around and the interference but when you spend that quality time you will see him talking to you through his holy spirit so it is a time actually of when you have examined and and thought about it it is a time to repent it's a very important thing this message of repentance this is a third thing that we can do during the season of lent now it is when we examine our heart and 
and what is not liked what we don't like and what we know god doesn't like in what we have done or what we have done uh, previously or what we are doing in our hearts then it is that we have to repent now repent uh, from the greek translated word means to change one's mind attitude and purpose and carries in, in its root the sense of pain so uh, repenting from sins doesn't simply mean it is uh, an academic change or just a lip service but a heartfelt repentance so repentance is a change of one's mind uh, attitude and purpose and it is always it has pain because you realize that you have sinned you realize that you have hurt others you realize that you have done things that you should not have done so when you repent god and when we realize when we accept that we have sinned then god is willing to accept our sins and forgive them he will blot it away but we have to accept we cannot uh, uh, do it without uh, the heartfelt change that is so what like i said it cannot be repentance cannot be like an academic exercise yeah i repented yeah i'm sorry no it has to come from the heart god sees our heart and he knows what level of genuity we have in our repentance so when we repent with a heartful uh, repentance there is a transformation of our mind and heart there is a transformation of our attitude towards sin because after that you would not want to do the same sin again because you have felt the pain of the sin that we have done against god and against our brothers so when and sisters and what we need to do is when we do this genuine transformation there will be an attitude change towards the sin and if it is genuine it will lead to the transformation of our actions away from the sin we will not go back this or, or the other word is we will not backslide so we have to constantly examine we constantly have to put it in prayer and we constantly have to repent now why is repentance important why is it important because most preachers usually do not talk about repentance they talk about the blessings they talk about uh, the eternal life and all that but all this starts with repentance now when when the repentance is a very sensitive topic but for some reason uh in my mind it was impressed that i have to put in this message the importance of repentance there are many verses in the bible which talks about repentance i've only taken some of it let us look at one of the first few uh uh sent a uh, verse that talks about repentance before jesus christ came and that was through john the baptist in matthew chapter 3 verse 2 john actually john the baptist is preaching and he says repent for the kingdom of god is near repent he is saying repent because all of us are ultimately we want to be in the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven we want to be there but the first thing is john the baptist is saying repent because it is near now when john gets uh, arrested and put into prison in mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 we see that Jesus actually goes to Galilee and he starts preaching the same message he said the time has come the kingdom of god has come near repent and believe the good news so it is not just john the baptist who is saying repent repent and repent that was his sermon over and over again but jesus continues on to say repent because the kingdom of god is near So Jesus himself has placed a huge significance and importance on repentance. Another aspect of repentance uh, that we can see in Luke chapter 17 verses 3 and 4 where he tells if your brother or sister sin against you rebuke them and if they repent forgive them if they repent forgive them even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times they come back to you and say i repent you must forgive them 
this is a verse that is very difficult for us to understand even one one time when a brother or sister has sinned against us itself for seven days we will be talking about it we will be you know analyzing it we will be dissecting it and all that and we will be gossiping about it or, or spreading that what that brother or sister has done to us but the scriptures today tell us even if your brother or sister has sinned against you for seven times in a day and if they ask for repentance forgive them of course in this uh, scripture he also says if your brothers sin against you rebuke them it's not like they do and then they just say uh, uh, forgive me we are uh, if they sin we are supposed to rebuke them and when they ask for repentance when we bring when you say basically rebuke is not to just call them but to bring out to them and say what they have done in the eyes of what they have done wrong in the eyes of god and how they have affected or uh, the people around them or how it has affected us so when we bring this out and that's what the bible says rebuke them and when they realize the mistake the, or the sin that they have done and they ask for repentance we are supposed to repent so what it is telling is that the fruit of repentance is forgiveness the fruit of repentance is forgiveness repentance is actually a doorway to forgiveness it's a doorway to forgiveness when others repent and when we can forgive them god can forgive us when we repent also how you know we as as the imperfect uh, human beings if we can forgive an uh, a brother or sister who has repented you think our heavenly father will not forgive us when we repent recently i saw a whatsapp uh, a, a clip of a sermon of a priest uh, in the roman catholic church and he was telling that uh, uh, in in roman catholic you can actually go and uh, uh, confess do confession and repent for your sins and uh, in this case this lady came and uh, she started giving a whole list Uh, of uh, repentance uh, uh, i mean a whole list of sins that she has done and is asking god for repentance and the priest while hearing this whole list of 10 uh, 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 sins that she has done he in his mind he is thinking would this lady have done such uh, uh, sins you know she doesn't fit a lady doing all these sins and uh, uh, but he was you know listening uh, very tentatively to her as a priest and then finally towards the end she says uh, father forgive her all the sins because uh, uh, this 10 sins have been done by my husband so the the father turned to her and said uh, uh, sister sorry the church doesn't have a system where the husband or the wife can come and ask for repentance for the husband or the husband can come and ask repentance for the wife so repentance why i'm telling you this comedy uh, uh, episode that i saw in whatsapp is basically repentance is n- it cannot be delegated or outsourced you cannot get somebody else to repent for us we have to examine ourselves we have to put in prayers we have to ask god to forgive our sins we have to repent from our heart not our our parents or our wife or our husband no it is we and god so repentance is a very personal thing that we have to uh, examine and, and carry out so dear brothers and sisters in christ repentance during this period of lent of examining ourselves is very important it is one of the fundamental doctrines of jesus and one of the prerequisite for the kingdom of god as what we just saw John the Baptist and Jesus Christ said repent for the kingdom of God is near. Repentance is a condition and conversion of the heart. It is not like I said it's not just an academic exercise it's not just a lip service but it is a condition and conversion of our hearts. As we prepare and move towards Easter which is uh, in uh, the beginning of April and when Easter symbolizes the resurrection of Christ who has the power over death and eternal life we must examine ourselves and truly appreciate 
the abandoned grace of Christ's saving work on the cross. This is a period to reflect not only on ourselves and also to reflect on Jesus and what he did for us. Let us submit to Christ during this Lent season. Let us submit to Christ's authority. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Easter with a renewed sense of joy. A renewed sense. I must... But, and, and when you want to prepare and when you are getting ready for Easter and all that, I must say and when we have to examine and, and pray and basically ask for repentance, there are two unexpected oppositions or enemies to repentance. And the two enemies to repent, uh, repentance is time and death. It's time and death. Now, there's a saying I'm, I'm sure all of you would have heard, time and tide waits for no man. Time does not wait for anybody. The tide does not wait for anybody. If it's low tide, it's low tide. If it's high tide, it's high tide. They just come and go, irrespective of what happens in our life. And our life is like a river flowing towards a sea. There is no reverse gear for the, the water to flow back. So, in there, I mean, the time is very important because we do not have pause or a stop button with time. So when we are given the gospel, when we hear the gospel, and when we accept Christ as our Savior and Redeemer, and we repent and ask God to forgive our sins, we are saved spiritually and we are confirmed of a place in heaven. So do not postpone this uh, decision to repent and to accept Christ because it could be the last time that God is offering us if we really look back in our lives there are many a times when we have felt that the pain in our hearts of the sins that we may have uh, committed or, or carried out but God is giving us an invitation to come back to him and to acknowledge and repent the sins that we would have done that has, must have hurt not only the people around us, it must have hurt very gravely to our Creator who created us. So when we ask for forgiveness and God is giving us an invitation, it could be our last invitation. We never know because God does not assure anyone another day. We are given a time to live 70 or 80 years in this earth. But we never know what is the time that is uh, allocated for us or when our number is called and we have to go. So let us accept Jesus as our Savior, Jesus as our Redeemer. Let us bring forth our, examine our hearts and bring forth our sins so that God can, uh, and, and ask God for repentance that God can forgive us. Because I've said, Many a times that uh, we, I mean, life is such that things can happen in a blink of an eye. One moment we are here, we are in this world, we are with everybody and all that. By the time we close our eyes and open, we are in front of the Creator. Are we ready? The question is, are we ready? Because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 reads, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what it is telling us that whatever that we have done will be bad, will be laid bare in front of us before the eyes of God. It will be laid without any covering. Everything that we have done, we have thought, we, uh, we have sinned, will be laid bare. And at the end of it, we have to give account for it. Why we did this, why we did that, why we have to give the accounts. We can postpone it, we can you know, forget it conveniently, as I said just now. But the thing is, with God, when it's time for judgment and when we are in front of our Creator, all these are going to be laid out bare. So are we ready? That is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Have we examined our hearts? Have we put it in prayer? Have we 
petition to God to forgive our sins and that we have repented for our sins before God can forgive. <coughs> so dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the time is now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. The time is now to ask, to repent and ask God to forgive our sins. Do not postpone because as I said, once a repent season is closed, then so is our opportunity to ask for forgiveness is also closed. During this period of preparation or during this period of Lent towards Easter, let us examine our spe- ourselves and find out what we need to ask for repentance. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us set aside time to prepare for the preparation for the resurrection of Christ. We know that with Easter, which is coming in April, we are going to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. But let that celebration be with preparation. Let us be in our hearts and in our minds, be forgiven by God. Let us put forward this, our sins and seek repentance. Let this time offer us an opportunity to come to terms with the conditions and to bring Saviour into our hearts. Not the human conditions that is actually more, has played a more important role over the Saviour. But this is a time to put our Saviour in front of our, our human conditions or our daily conditions. Lent is a time to open the door to our heart a little wider and to understand and know God a little deeper. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when Easter comes this time, let us be prepared. And when we receive this, this forgiveness, there will be an overflow of joy in our hearts. And when we humble ourselves in front of God, it is a demonstration of our dependence and thanksgiving to God. So let not this Easter be just like another Sunday. Let us prepare from today. Let us examine, let us seek repentance and accept Christ as our Savior. Do not postpone. And when you have prepared, you will find the true meaning of Easter and the resurrection of Christ and why He died for us on the cross for our sins. So let us spend the, the, this Lenten uh, period, Lenten season before Easter with reverence. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing forward this importance of this Lenten season to us, Lord. That it is very important that we examine ourselves and we ask for repentance, Lord. That we ask for your forgiveness. That when we repent, as you said, that even when our brothers and sisters have sinned against us and they ask for repentance, we are asked to forgive, Lord. Lord, with that same heart, we are coming to you with total heartfelt repentance, Lord. We are asking you to forgive our sins. We are asking you that to give us the strength to, to examine our hearts into the deep recesses of our heart to bring out all that that has been stored there for ages and for, for years and years and years, Lord. That we may have conveniently forget, forgotten about it or unconsciously forgotten. Bring them out and that we may seek repentance on the sins that we have done, Lord. It could be intentional or it could be unintentional, Lord. But in your eyes, if it is a sin, bring it out to the forefront so that we may ask for forgiveness from you and that we will seek your blessing and your mercy and glory to forgive us, Lord. Lord, we pray that all those who are listening to this message, that they will be blessed, Lord. They will be blessed in all their a job or in their business, that they will be blessed in their ministry, that they will be blessed in their family, that their children will be blessed and they will be able to do well in the exams that is taking place now, Lord. Lord, we pray also that you cover the children's 
the children who are going back to school from tomorrow or not that this pandemic or whatever that is happening around does not touch them cover them with your precious blood and let them get back into the routine of learning lot this one year has been a total disruption to their learning process but let not let that not be a stumbling block in their development as they go further in their studies lot and for children who are seeking work after their studies even though businesses even though the economy is is not too well but in your eyes there is nothing that is impossible lot we pray for them that they will get a job that will bring them to the forefront that will bring glory and honor to your name lord and let them know that it is only through their own prayers and their repentance that they have seen your hand at work lord that others around them will know that you have done it for them lord that you are a living god that your name may be exalted and glorified lord it is not our it is not our honor it's not our praise but all honor praise belongs to you lord lord we all this we pray in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 so dear brothers and sisters thank you for sharing this time and uh spend this uh, lenten season to really examine and, and ask for repentance this message of repentance is very important right from the time even before jesus came and even jesus thought about repentance because the kingdom of heaven is near so we never know what is going to happen but when we leave it in his hands he will take care of us so until we see you next week have a great week god bless you.